Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this today's video, we're going to be painting a Sisters of Battle cherub all the way from start to finish. Uh, always a good thing to do now is please subscribe to the channel. My analytics are in. 80% of my viewers have not subscribed. It would be amazing if you could subscribe to the channel. Almost at a thousand subscribers. So close yet so far and it's really cool please also like the video ring that bell and share it with your hobby mates so without any any more waffling let's get into the video let's go first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to base coat all of the flesh areas with a kislev flesh i have primed this with um grace here so you can also prime it with uh, Corax White if you want. You can do black, but you're just going to have to do some additional base layers for the flesh. I'm using my Rosemarine Core Series 33 size 1 for this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get all of the flesh areas... coated and then once that's done we'll go on to the next stage so be right back so once that was done a couple of thin layers of kislev uh, flesh what you want to do is just get some thin down Reichland flesh shade and just go over the whole thing all you're really wanting this to do is sit in the recesses just as so. And then I'll let that dry. You can use a hairdryer to get it dry. Or you can just allow it to wait. If you're going to allow it to wait, probably take about 10 15 minutes. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this off, let it dry, and then we'll be right back. So, once that's dry, what you want to do is you want to just get some. His left flesh nice and thin and you just want to pick out the raised areas on the cheeks you want to basically leave the Reichlin flesh shade in the recesses so because it's nice and thin just want to get that over the top like so Just all on the top of the arm here. And on the shoulder. It's just like a little fat butter. Kind of strangely cute. You can add some glaze and stuff near the end. We just want to pick out those prominent points. Like so. And once you're happy with that, what you need to do then is get some. Um, I'm completely saying the wrong paint. You base coat it with some Kidian flesh tone, and then Reichland flesh tone for the wash. And then you start adding Kislev flesh in for the highlights. My mistake. So the first mix of Kadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh. Just all on the top of there. Picking out his little nose. Just above the eye. This is a battle of a lot of cherubs. Um, I believe Space Marines also use ammo cherubs. Crazy little things. 
So I'm really pleased with the fact that um, in the next week or so, I will have a new lamp, which will give me better quality light and will just make the videos look so much more better. So it's going to be really cool. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to get these highlights on and I'll be right back. Okay, once you've got those first highlights on, add some more Kislev Flesh to your mix. It's pretty much almost pure Kislev Flesh at this stage. And then, again, you just want to pick out those raised areas a little bit more. And then just... little fat chin underneath his secondary chin you should start seeing the highlights come out now and there's many these little prominent areas here just where the light's gonna catch it like so and then along the top of his arm So, for the top of his head here, just add a little bit of water to your mix, so it's almost a glaze, and then just take some of the paint off, and then just over the top, and then just feather it out around the edges, just like that. And then on top of his knees, his underbelly. Like so. And just get his little bum. So for the final highlight, you want to get some screamer skull. Mix that in. So you basically want to take your your original mix and have it about a 50-50 mix. And then again, just picking out the most prominent raised areas. Like so. Get that pudgy little face. Remember, these are not really essential to the army, but for things like the Exorcist and the Immolator and things, you do have the option of putting them on the tanks, so they're going to be on the board all times. Well, as long as the tank's on the board. So it's really, it, it's a good idea to at least paint them pretty decent because they do look kind of cool and strangely cute again just getting the tops of his little ear like so really start seeing the highlights coming out now and just on the side here as well get the top of his knee and then just run, just dab it over the top of his toes. And all on the back, on the heels. Just across the soles of his tops of his feet. And then just nice and thinly, all the prominent raised areas. So you really go to town on the cherub if you really want to. We're just going to do a nice, quick, quick, easy way to do it. And then just to finish it off, just get some pure Screamer Skull. And then on the very prominent 
features. On the tops of his cheeks. A little lip. Just pick out the most prominent areas to get that done. And on the top of the hand, mainly his knuckles, this little sort of fleshy part here, you just want a nice little dot. And then across the top of his chest. Just like so. And make sure you get his little ear. So I'm going to finish that off. And then once you've done this, what you want to do is you, if you want, you can cover the wings in Korax white and the scroll in Korax white. I'll do that quickly off camera and then we'll get to the next part. Okay. So I've covered the wings and the scroll in Corax white paint. If you've primed Corax white paint, all this stage is going to be is essentially tidying those, those areas up. So what I'm about to do now is I'm going to use apothecary white contrast paint, like so, and I'm going to cover the whole of the wings, both wings. And then for the scroll that he's sort of standing on, I'm going to use skeleton horde. So just keep these here. Again, I'm still using the same brush. You can make use a bigger or smaller one. It's completely up to you. I'm not mixing any medium or anything into this. It's just completely. So just do each wing at a time. Just making sure that you're pulling the, the paint towards the edges. Like so. Do one way at a time, and if you get any pooling, like you can see here, just get rid of the excess. Like so. Now for the next one. Making sure you do the tops of the wings. So again, after this wing just to make sure there's no pooling just in here you can see a bit of pooling and just there just make sure you got no pooling and just pull it so it's sitting nicely in now to do the inside of the wings Exactly the same. So here you can see a really large pool area of pooling. So just pull this out, soak up any of the excess. Perfect. And then for the final wing, do exactly the same. These Doing the wings like this will work for anything in the sisters army, even um, a blood angel army, if you're going to use sanguinary guard and do those wings. So the next part is the skeleton horde. And again, exactly just like how we did the wings, it's just straight from the pot, not too much on the brush. And then you just want to 
go all the way over the scrolled area. And it pulls, don't worry too much, we'll tidy that up. sides so once it's all on any major pooling that you can see just take that away same as this part here just smooth that out like so just check the front There you go. So allow that to dry and I will be right back. Okay, that's everything dry. So what we're gonna do now, using a mix of some Griff Charger Grey and some Lamium's Medium, just to make it a little bit thinner, what we're gonna do is we're going to run this paint just along the underside of the wings. As so and before it dries just feather that out a little bit like so just do it for the other set of wing uh, feathers just want to get some a little bit sharper definition In those feathers you can if you really want to just pull it down in like that right. and then again on the other side so and on the inside making sure if you if it's pulling a little bit just to feather it out you just add in some extra definition to the the little feathers if you don't have grist charger grey you can use um, space wolf grey contrast paint or even thinned down rust grey so next using some thinned Ulthwine grey you just want to pull all on the bottoms of the feathers. And then over the top part. You just want this to sort of stay at the edges of each feather. Just to give it some highlight. And then the next one. So 
and then for the highlight you just want to get some white I use a white acrylic ink and then just to turn it around and I just run the edge of the brush at a 45 degree angle off the edges and the same along the top. Just run a, a highlight along the tops of the feathers. Again. And then that's the back of the, the feathers done. If you want definition, so here the, you haven't really got much, but if you want to emphasize it, just get some thinned Griff Charger or Space Wolf Grey and just drop it into the recesses just to pick out the feathers a little bit better. But that's that. And then what you do is you do exactly the same at the front. So now we will go and do the scroll. So I'll be right back. Okay, for the scroll, what you need is some thinned shapty bone. And all you want to do is pick out the highest areas. Like so. this little part here and then just run the sides I'll do the same for the front but before I do that Next, just get some thinned Screamer Skull and again do the exact same and on the top and just feather it out. So you do exactly the same thing for the front as you're doing in the back. And then for the final highlight, again, I'm using some white acrylic ink. And I'm just literally just going to be doing a very thin edge highlight. On the edge and down the sides. And then just like 
nice thin highlights. And then for the little bit on the edge here, like so. So once you've done the highlights, what you can do is just add a little bit of text. So what I do is I get some Rhinox hide and thin it quite far down. Now you could use a smaller brush, but I'm just going to use this brush and you want it a little bit like that. And then very carefully Start writing some text on it. We can do some cool symbols. A little bit of freehand if you want it to. Just get some writing all on the edges. So you can do that at the front and the back. So I'm going to finish all this off and then we'll be right back. So now that's all done, what we're going to be doing now is all of the metallics. Now, the metallics is obviously this big thing here, the little eye, and then if you see any of these little sockets and little, little mechanical parts sticking out, as well as his mechanical spine. So just using some lead belcher, just carefully bring that down. Like so. Just want a nice layer. For any of the, the sockets and stuff, you want to be very careful not to get anything else. Like that. And then do the wires. Now, if you want, you can do these wires a different set of different colors, but it's only, it's, it's only a little cherub, so I'm just gonna keep it basically simple. And these parts here. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to get all of this done, making sure it's all covered. And then I'll be right back. So all of the metallics are on and dry. So what we want to do now is we want to get some black Templar contrast paint and we want to thin it down with some Lamin's medium. So it's about that thick, all right? So wash consistency and very carefully wash the whole area of metallics. Being careful not 
to get it onto the skin tool. So if you're going to get these little parts here, put on his eye. So, make sure you get all the way around. And is a little spine here. I really, really like using contrast paints now for shading my metallics because they just really make metallics stand out so much better than uh, new oil. Okay, so I'll allow that to dry and then we'll get but before it does, what we can do is we can get a little bit of corn red and very carefully on his eye, just do the eye lens, like so, and then allow that to dry. So I'll be right back when that dries and then we'll get on to the highlighting. Welcome back. So, straight into the highlighting. Now it's all nice and dry. Took about a good couple of minutes. So what you want to do now is using some uh, Stormhost Silver, just pick out the most prominent edges of his little arm, the handles, little thing and the wires just the top of the thing we're going to do the eye as well in a minute so what I want to do very carefully let's get a highlight around the eye socket very carefully Like so. And for this part, just do the straps. And the good thing with metallics is it, it's nice and quick. You just want the highlights on. And then for a spine around the back, just get some paint on the brush and just brush it over the top and then a quick highlight at the back. So everything's highlighted. So what we now do for the eye is we base coated it. So we want this eye to look pretty cool. So we're using some Evil Sun Scarlet and very carefully put a thin line the bottom of the eye. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom the camera in. I'll be right back and I'll zoom the camera in so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so I've zoomed it in. So what you want is, you want this line to be right at the bottom of the eye socket. Like so. And then using some Wild Rider Orange, and I am going to switch brushes to something a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to get my zero out because that's a better point. And I 
again with some Wild Rider Orange. Just pull on the very bottom of the eye socket. That's ultra thin paint. so and then use it you can get some troll slayer oranges then do exactly the same at the bottom of the eye and then just to get the eye to pop get some white acrylic ink and a very 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 small dot just in the top here like so and then if you want just do a very thin line at the bottom like so and that is the eye so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the base done and then we'll be right back for once it's all finished and that's it all based and done <clears throat> there's going to be a, a separate base a separate video on how i do my bases but that is it i hope you found this useful and fun they are really really cool little things the paint um and it's really really awesome so as I said at the beginning of the video, um, if you want to support the channel, um, you can head over to my Patreon and um, and support there. All the support is massively appreciated, and the support that I've had already has been able to for me to upgrade my lamp. So I've got a better lamp coming. It's going to give a better quality of light. It's going to have daylight bulbs, so it's going to the videos will look a lot better because of the better lighting. Um, which is really really cool they've all they, the patreon in the past have even been able to um has allowed me to get a a, a camera stand so that i can actually have the camera mounted above my desk to get better quality um viewing so the, better positions so everything that i get from patreon goes back into the channel and allows me to buy new models for tutorials and new materials and cooler stuff that if you want me to do like basing and things I'm able to go off and, and get everything that I need to do those specific projects so it'd be much appreciated if you could um, also please uh, subscribe to the channel it, we're almost at a thousand subscribers like the video ring that bell and share it with your friends thanks everyone and I'll see you in the next one goodbye